So when I think about disability justice, I think about being a little girl and so many years spent walking instead of using a wheelchair and like my so many years spent um, thinking like, oh, how far do I have to walk until I sit down or what am I going to do if I'm going to fall or, you know, just being feeling really, really um, concerned by physicality that when I started using a wheelchair, like instantly went away. Mm -hmm. And I was so shocked that for so long um, that wheelchair was thought to be this, you know, like the end of a good life. And really yeah. it was the opposite and it was so liber liberating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people have a, use the word like wheelchair bound and I found that it was really the opposite. Like I really got to be a kid once I started using a chair or, you know, or I think about going to physical therapy three times a week and like being really resentful around why am I doing this? Is it like, what's the purpose? Cause I'm not interested in like this obsession with walking or having, a, you know, a straight head instead of a tilted head or, you know, walking side to side instead of whatever. Um, or all the, you know, being a young girl and doing all of these surgeries and feeling like, do these surgeries really benefit me? Why are they making me do this when it's really, overall so insignificant but um you know again things like a neck straightening surgery you miss a whole summer of being a kid and it's just so that your head looks straighter um, and not really medically necessary but wow but so much of that is around like i think about my mom and you know my dad being gone and so she's a korean mom with all of these white doctors and then telling her she's not being a good mom if I don't do these surgeries and is medicine about quality of life or is it about like social control and perpetuating this idea of like a good body? Mm -hmm. Ableism is the bane of my motherfucking existence. Ableism is, um, it's funny because people are like, oh, I'm so sorry that you're disabled. And it's absurd. I, I kind of want people to be like, oh, I'm so sorry that we live in ableism and I'm perpetuating it every day. Like, that's an appropriate thing to feel shitty about. <laughs> I think there's a political understanding of so ableism as a system of oppression that favors able-bodiedness at any cost, frequently at the expense of people with disabilities. Um, and I think ableism touches every aspect of life. Earlier you were talking about internalized ableism and all of these values that people with disabilities adopt and carry shame and it's like so heavy such a heavy coat, you know? Um, and then I think there's ways ableism gets played out interpersonally between non-disabled people and people with disabilities. We know that the employment rate for people with disabilities has barely shifted over the last 40 years. We know so many people with disabilities are still locked away in institutions or in back rooms. So there's that interpersonal um, and systemic piece and then also um, the institutional ableism. So what systems are in place that per, like continually keep people with disabilities out. There's a lot of conversation to be had too, I think about all the ways that ableism and racism and classism and heterosexism and all forms of oppression like really work together to, yeah, keep people, people out. I remember being little and um, being outside of a grocery store and this is before the ADA and there were these big poles to keep the um, shopping carts in. And that also kept people in chairs out. And so, um, you know, people would tie their dogs on the poles and I would, <laughs> and I would like hang out with the dogs outside um, because I couldn't go in the grocery stores, you know? And I mean, that's what it looks like when you don't have access, right? Is you just get literally left outside.